Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to user one productions my name is David and in today's unity tutorial we are going to go over how to open and close a drawer and have a potential object the player can pick up inside. As always my friends if you come to enjoy this video please remember to drop me a like subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss another tutorial like this one. And also keep in mind everything I use in these tutorial series scripts models sound effects etc it can be found on a google drive linked in the description for a free download without any copyright this means you can use my scripts and assets so that way you can create your own game or just prototype your systems something else in the description you can find is our discord server with over 250 people looking for new friends people to help work on projects or just to answer questions. Something I'd like to note before we actually go ahead and get into the series, if you are modeling your own model, which is just a little drawer I mocked up really fast, you wanna make sure that the base of it is separate from the drawer, so that way when we go to animate it, this is a separate piece to it. If they were one object, you could not animate the drawer opening, and thus for would be a wasteful model at that point. Okay, so here I am in a blank scene inside of Unity. The only thing I've gone ahead and done was go Window, Asset Store, or Package Manager, depending what version of Unity you're using, and I just imported these standard assets so I can use the FPS controller, which will be the player we're using in this specific tutorial and a lot of my other tutorials. Okay, so the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to create a cube so we can walk around on it. I'm just going to make this 25 by 25 on the X and Z, and then I'm going to go into the standard assets and actually drag in that first person player. Next up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure his collider is above the ground so that way when we walk, he'll actually be walking. And then personally, I like to make him a little taller, so I'm going to bring the camera object up a little bit. And then to add some contrast to the scene, I'm just going to add this little gray texture to the floor. Okay, now if you guys are familiar with my tutorial series, you know I usually create a reach tool in front of the character, and that is what's going to determine how close or far we are from the actual object. Uh, in this case a drawer and if we are in that range we can open it if we're not we cannot open it or close it so the way i do this is i grab the camera we're using and i right click and i go to a cube i like to drag that in front of the camera and then i'm just going to size it down until it's about the size of this so that is going to be the collider that is going to have to hit the drawer in order to open it but right now it is still a cube so i will just extrude it a little bit and now if we play the game, I'm not going to maximize on play because we're going to pay attention to this top window real quick. You can see that that object follows the camera around. So it's kind of like a ray cast, just a little bit more simplified. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this to reach tool. And then we want to make sure we have a reach tag with a capital R because that's how I'm writing the script. Uh, if you want it to be a different tag, you just have to change the script a little bit. To create a tag, you go add tag, press this plus and type in reach. Go back to that reach tool object and just make sure it is tagged reach. Something else we can do is we can actually get rid of the mesh renderer on the reach tool itself. As long as it has the box collider, it'll still work properly. And playing the game again, you could see that little box collider moving around. This just ensures that the character does not see the reach tool or a shadow casting from it. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to bring in the drawer real quick, which again, you can find in the description for a free download. And right now, I don't really enjoy how the textures look on it. Um, so I'm just going to add some materials I have created inside of Unity. Uh, right now, the model that you're going to be able to download is unwrapped. So you cannot actually add a texture to it. But if you go into Blender, sure enough, you guys can figure that out. It's very simple to unwrap it. So something we want to do right off the rip is we want to go to the main object. So right now, we have a drawer. Uh, and then underneath this drawer, and that is the game object that we are going to be animating. The main table, which is the whole table, and then we have the plane, which is just a cloth. So in the parent object of drawer, we want to add component, and this is going to be a box collider. And right now the collider is a little uh, sinking into the floor. We want to make sure to make this the whole size of this object, because this is the collider the player is going to have to look at in order to open this drawer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to front view orthographic in Unity. You could do that with this axes right here at the top right. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And then in the box collider, you can actually edit box collider. And it's going to allow you to resize it a little more manual than inputting numbers. So once I have the shape of the front, I'm going to go to the right side of the object and again, scale it accordingly. And now if we look at it, we have a collision box around the drawer. 
Now, as of right now, this collider will not do anything because it is not a trigger. So we want to make sure that box collider is trigger. So now if I maximize on play, we have a collider on the main drawer object. But because it is a trigger, it doesn't actually restrict our player from walking through it. So what we need to do is go to the main table and we're going to do that same thing, adding a box collider. And now that, that box collider is around it, we not only have the trigger that we're going to be using to open this, but now we can actually hop on top of it. We cannot walk through it or anything like that. Perfect. We're not done with this whole drawer object though, because we need to create three animations for it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the drawer and add an animation. So we need three animations because at first it's going to be idle, which is the state it's in right now. The second animation will be it opening and the third animation will be it closing. So what we need to do is click the parent object of drawer, create, and I'm just going to call this idle. Now let's start recording. Make sure you're recording because if you're not, you might get a little irritated. You just created an animation and it didn't save. So from the parent object, let's click the actual drawer object and let's lock its position. We do this by moving the object and then moving it back to its original state. So you can do this by moving it and moving it back, but it's not always precise. So let me control Z to go back to my normal state. If you hold control, it snaps in increments of about 0.25. So that's how I'm going to be animating this object right now. So let's pull it forward, pull it back. And at the one second mark, we're going to do that same thing, pull it forward and pull it back. So now that animation is just the drawer being idle. We could stop recording. Let's go to create new clip. And this is going to be open. I'm going to start recording and I'm going to lock its position again, because in the open animation, it is going to start like this. It's going to start closed and then eventually open. So what I'm going to do is at the one second mark, I'm going to pull it forward a little bit. Not too much, right about there looks good. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to grab the final position of it and I'm gonna hit Control C to copy. We're gonna stop recording, create a new animation clip and this is going to be closed drawer. Start recording and on that very first frame I'm gonna do Control V and that's going to copy and paste the open final position. And at the one second mark, we're gonna pull it back to its original position like that. So now it closes, it is idle and it can open. Perfect. Okay, so now if you click the main object of drawer, let's actually go into the animator. This is what is going to be controlling the opening and closing of the drawer. So first what I want to do actually is click each one of these states, find its animation, find them all, and turn loop pose off. You can do this by clicking the individual boxes, clicking the motion, and it's going to highlight where that animation clip is. So I'm going to do that for them all and just turn loop time off. And now that we've turned the loop time off, so if we open the drawer, it would just keep playing the animation over and over again. Now it'll just play it once and stop. What I'm going to do is make this a little more neater. I'm going to put open drawer on top, close drawer on the bottom, while the idle drawer is right here in front. Pull this any state away, and now it looks a little more cleaner. If idle drawer is not your default layer, you can tell if it's defaulted by being orange. If not, you can right click and set as layer default state, okay? Over here in the top left, there is layers and parameters. Make sure you're in parameters and add a bool. This is going to be open, all lowercase, and then we're going to add another one for close. Lowercase, because that is how the script is going to be reading it. We'll go over that a little later. So the first thing I'm going to do from idle drawer, it's going to be able to open. So we're going to make a transition to open. Click this line it just created, which is the transition. Has exit time off. Make sure that is not ticked. And then in the conditions, we're going to add, and that is if open is true. And now when the drawer is open, we have to go from there. So make a transition to close because when it's open, we want to be able to close it again. Click that line exit time off. And this is if close is true. And when it is closed, we want to make sure we can open it again. So we'll make another transition. Click that line I just created exit time off. And this is if open is true. And that is basically it for this animator. The next thing we're going to create is actually a little crosshair for where our reach tool is in front of our player. And then we're going to create some text saying open or close the drawer. So let's go ahead and we're going to right click in the hierarchy. We're going to go UI canvas and you could just rename this to HUD. That's personally what I like to do because it's the heads up display. And over here in canvas scaler, we want to change this from constant pixel size to scale with screen size. And I'm going to do 1920 by 1080. So what this is going to do is no matter what size the window is, the HUD or the UI in the game is going to remain in that same spot. So it doesn't matter if we have the game full screened 
or if we have it in a little window like this bottom one down here, it's always going to stay in the same area where we place it. So inside that HUD, let's go ahead and go UI. We're going to do a raw image. I'm going to call this crosshair. If you're using the standard assets like I am, you can go into the texture and type in knob and there's a circle right here. Uh, right now that's kind of big. So what I'm going to do is change the width and height to about 25. I think that's a little too small. So let's do something more like 35 for demonstration purposes. You can play the game and you can change that size to matter what. Uh, right now that looks OK. And then what we're going to have to do is I'm going to create an empty game object. I'm going to call this open text and inside the open text we want to go ui and this is going to say open roar we can actually see this a little better if we go into the scene view go into front orthographic and double click that text and then we can see it right here this whole box is our canvas that we get to work in so for my text i'm actually going to change the width and height to about 250 by 75 so that way we can actually make the text a little bigger we do that by going to font size and I might double it to about 24. So that way it's easier to read inside of the game. And personally, I'm going to change this to just black instead of the default gray it usually comes as. And now if we go to the paragraph segment, we can actually go center, center on both axes. And now it's right in front of our uh, crosshair. So what I'm going to do actually is just pull it down to about right there. And then that text you can just call interaction. And now we can do control D on interaction. I will call this input. I personally enjoy seeing what button to press when I'm looking at an object in a game. So what I'm going to put in the text is a bracket, a capital E and another bracket, just because this is going to be uh, what button we're pressing down uh, when we're opening the drawer. You can have this as whatever, and we need to set up a input later for this button. What I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to change this to a dark red because this is part of my horror tutorial series and I just think the red looks good with a horror game. And then I'm going to drag the input E down below open drawer. So now when we play the game, we can see the text. This is what's going to appear every time we look at this when it's closed. So now we just need to make one for when it is open and we need to close it. We simply do this by grabbing the open text empty game object we created, control D. And I'm going to call this close text. And then we can just go inside the interaction. And instead of open, it's going to be closed drawer. And then the input can stay the same because it is still going to be E. The next thing we need to do actually is go into edit, project settings. And in here is your input manager over here on the left. And you can have a million inputs if you wanted to. Right now I have the 25 and it's going to just duplicate. In my case, it's canceled because that's the last one in my list. What you want to do is go into one of those cancels and rename it interaction with a capital I because this is what the script is going to be looking for for the uh, button press down. And then inside positive button I have it as E. You can change this to whatever button you want. And once that is finished we can actually go into the script and see how it actually works. So this is a pretty small script. Uh, it's very simple and it works very efficiently. So let's go over what we'll be using inside the script. At the top here, we have a public animator because we are using an animation to open and close this drawer. And it is going to be changing the bools within that animation, which I just call Annie. Underneath this, we have two public game objects. Uh, one is for the open text and then the closed text. We then have two public audio sources for when the drawer is opening and when it is closing. In my case, I'm going to be using the same exact sound effect, but you can create an open sound and a closed sound and have two different sound effects playing, depending what it's doing. And then we have two private bools. One private bool is going to be open, and then the other one is going to be in reach. So obviously open is going to be telling us if the drawer is already open within our script. Private bool for in reach is just going to be if that game object we created earlier, the reach tool, colliding with our drawer. So let's go down to the start function, which is right here. We want to make sure the open and close text are automatically defaulted to false. We want to make sure those are off. So when we start the game, they'll automatically turn off no matter if they're already off or if you had them on an accident. We then have the bools for the animation, which we want open to be false right off the start and close to be false because we want it to start in that idle phase. And then is the drawer open? No, so false. We have a void on trigger enter. So in the on void trigger enter, we have a collider other and we just claim that this other here is going to be the game object tag with reach. So that is the object in front of our camera. That is the reach tool. So pretty much what we're saying is if our reach tool collides with whatever object this script is attached to and the drawer is not open, you give this exclamation mark right here 
before a phrase and it just gives it the opposite so right now we're saying not open so right now we are looking at the object and the drawer is closed we say in reach is true because we are in reach of the object and we want the open text to turn on because it's going to be saying hey you want to open this closed drawer but then we have an else if statement so if we look at this game object and the drawer is currently open again in reach is true because we are in reach of the object but we want the closed text to become true because now it is open and we are wanting to close it and then on our on void trigger exit again this is just calling back to the reach tool we created if we exit the game object we are no longer in reach and it turns both the texts off depending which one is on at the current moment okay and then we have our void update which is actually where we are going to be able to open this drawer so if the drawer is not open we are in reach and we press down the interact button remember we created that earlier that was the e button in the player preferences so it's not open and we press e when we're looking at it the open sound plays we set the animation bool open to true so open and close right here is calling to our animator these two bools right here and here which is why it's important that open and close inside the parameters for our transitions matches what these say here because that's what the script is calling to so we play the sound we play the open animation open is now true the open text becomes false and the in reach becomes false the reason these two lines are right here is to just fix some bugs that were occurring during testing uh, you can find those again down here in the else if statement so in our else if statement we are now saying the drawer is open we are in reach and we press down our interact button the close sound plays open becomes false the open bool inside the animator that is and then the closed bool inside the animation becomes true because now it is going to be playing the close animation and since it's closed we put open to false and then there's the text and in reach becoming false again to eliminate any bugs that were occurring okay so in our drawer parent object we want to make sure we add the script open drawer to it we see we have the animation open text close text and then the two sound effects so the animation we can just click and drag the parent object of the door in open text is going to be the open text we created earlier as well as the closed text and now we have two sound effects so what i like to do is actually click on the fps controller which is the parent object of our player and i like to go create empty and then call this sounds inside there i will create another empty game object and i'll just call this open sound we can click and drag the drawer sound into that empty game object make sure play on wake is ticked off or you'll hear the sound effect play as soon as the game starts and then we can actually duplicate this and do close sound and then if you guys had a close sound effect you can just click and drag it in for now i'm going to use the drawer sound as the open and closed let's go back to the drawer real quick and plug those in so open goes to open and close sound goes to close sound so now when we play the game this text should automatically disappear we should be able to walk over to this drawer and open it and as well as close it good the text has disappeared everything's working so far we look at it open drawer e nothing's inside and then we can close the drawer and we can continuously do that as many times as we possibly want okay so now let's say you want something inside of this drawer what you can do actually is pull this drawer away from the actual table itself because we have an animation saying hey this is where you start so no matter what that's where the drawer will start we can actually pull it away and add whatever we want inside which i actually have this little pistol that i modeled up real quick uh, again all these models will be in the description for a free download inside the google drive we can actually just place that right inside like this and then we want that pistol object to be a child of drawer so now when we play the game first of all you notice that the drawer actually snaps right back to its original position because we created that idle animation and then we can walk over to the drawer and then there's a pistol sitting inside and i've gone over numerous times on the channel how to actually pick up objects so you can find that tutorial on the channel i'm sure but that's how it's done and we close it the gun goes with the drawer and then there it is again perfect well my friends that's gonna be about it for today's tutorial i hope everyone has enjoyed if you did please remember to drop me a like subscribe if you're new and click that notification bell as i said earlier everything you saw in this video and every video on this channel can be found for a free download without any copyright in the description on a google drive and please my friends remember to join our discord it is growing rapidly 
and so is this channel we're about to hit 2,000 subscribers so i really do appreciate it you guys are awesome thank you all so much for the support and this is user one productions signing off for now peace